Hey everybody, so glad you're joining us. Welcome to Elevate Hope. This is our first season, our second episode, and I'm really excited. Hey, just last week we had Pastor Malcolm McPhail with us, our senior pastor here at New Hope, and he just shared uh, just the story of hope and uh, shared a story of when he was diagnosed with leukemia and kind of the fight that God put in him to uh, really thrive in his life. And so uh, it was a great story. If you haven't seen that yet, please go back and watch it. It'll be a great encouragement to you and also share it with other people. Well, hey, I am here today with one of my good friends and he's a pastor here at uh, New Hope Community Church. How long have you been a pastor at New Hope now? Uh, just over 19 years. Here, wow. here. Yeah. Wow. You, yep. And, and uh, gosh, going way back, we've been friends for how long now? It's been a while. Boy, probably 27 years or so. Uh, I've known you since you were a junior in high school. Wow. And uh, knew you when you got saved. And, yep. and just, uh, I think in the last 27, 28 years, <sighs> we've been uh, connected as friends in, in ministry. And yeah. And, and then we have some background also. It's, um, to, if you could share a little bit about what we did together several years ago and, and kind of the, the stuff that came out of that. Um, well, there's only a few things that I could actually share that we did together <laughs> on this podcast. Uh, one of the things I got to say, I got to learn how to, how to talk and smile like Chris does. It's amazing, Chris. You're, you're able to talk and smile. That's a, that's a gift right there. Uh, Chris and I uh, planted a church together in the mid-90s with our wives, and uh, Chris's little daughter at the time was just a that's baby. Right. Gosh. And uh, how old is Veronica? She's 26 now. 26. So that's 26 wow. years ago. It's 25 years ago. We planted this church. Matter of fact, that church is coming up on its 25th anniversary yep. in May. And Chris and I planted that church with another wow. pastor. And both of us were on uh, staffs, uh, staff at other churches uh, in the Bay Area. I was in Petaluma. Chris was in Burlingame. Yeah. And we left full-time ministry positions to go and pastor that church. And yeah. remember how, how, how difficult that seemed at the time, but how... Uh, how amazing it was to know that that was the direction God was taking us in. Yeah, and, and like you said, we left, you know, kind of those positions, and then we we moved over to Fremont, and we went and got jobs. And what were, you had like three jobs. I remember, like you were waking yeah. up at three in the morning, and and all uh, that was that was some fun times. But tell us a little bit. Well, about I was middle of the night. I was getting up and delivering papers out of my car. That's right. That's right. And uh, both of us were from that area. I, I grew up in Newark. Chris grew up in Fremont. Yeah. So. It was kind of home turf for us, so I had a lot of connections there. I went back into uh, construction work, and so I was doing that during the day, and then also uh, during the wow. night, I uh, did, only did it for a short, short period of time, but delivering newspapers out of my car yeah, I remember from that. 3 to 6.30 in the morning, and we, then coming home and making a lunch, and then going and working all day on a construction site, and then coming home, and you know this, man, we did ministry every yeah, single night. I remember was, that. We were always out. And it was like one of those times that you go, I never felt like I worked harder, but I never felt, I don't know that I've ever felt that rewarded in ministry, that it was just exciting. Those were good times. Yep. I remember I was flipping chips for Frito-Lay back right. then too, and we were yep. just, and we met like, gosh, once uh, once a week for staff meetings. It was our day off, and so we had rush, and we'd go over that, and, and uh, I... I I know how to make coffee now, but remember the time I, I made you and, and Greg coffee? Yeah, I don't, was, think, uh, I don't think I don't think I'll ever forget that, Chris. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I remember it. It still uh, it still haunts me. That uh, you know, if you know anything about bad. about Chris, he's a great you know he's a connoisseur of car coffee. I, I make good coffee. He now. makes good coffee, but not then. No, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Oh gosh, yeah, we we had a lot of good times together, man. I let, I, I want to uh, bring up a couple. Uh, questions for today's podcast, but I, I want to just start off with this because you didn't grow up in a Christian home, but you, you, had, um, you had someone share Jesus with you mm -hmm. and it just, God took it from there, uh, your life. And can, can you open with this? Because it kind of leads into discipleship, you yeah. know, when you came to Christ. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened and kind of the steps God and the journey God took you on. Yeah. You know, the, I'll give you the short, kind of short condensed version of, of my testimony. I, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Like mm -hmm. you said, my dad was a, a police officer in San Francisco, and that's where I was born. But when I was two, we moved to the East Bay, to Newark. And, uh, you know, just uh, uh, just a non-Christian home, I, I, you know, what, what I would have thought was a good family. Uh, and and things, were, things were good for a long time. 
My dad ended up, uh, for some medical reasons, had to retire fairly early. Had two heart attacks on the job, oh, wow. actually, and uh, in the in the late '60s and early '70s. And uh, so <clears throat> things kind of kind of derailed when he turned to alcohol, pretty heavy in in his life, and mm-hmm. it really uh, kind of blew the family up. Wow. And so for me, uh, when I was 13, a family moved in across the street. And a Christian family that really kind of brought me in. Mm -hmm. And I had every birthday that they had in their family. I was there for every birthday, all the holidays. And they started inviting me to come to church with them and to go to youth group. And I remember even at 13, trying to get their son high. We were riding bikes together, <laughs> and I tried Gosh. to I tried to get him high because yeah. they're taking you to church, and you're trying to get yeah. They're taking they're, <laughs> they're trying to disciple me, and I'm trying to disciple their son, Gosh. you know, in, in the wrong kind of way. Uh, but they really just reached out to me and demonstrated the the love of God. And you know you know the coffee family. I know family. coffee as well, you know yeah. very well. And uh, and to this day, they still uh, hold a uh, just a special wow. part and place in my heart. I actually made my uh, made a commitment to Christ. I almost said my first commitment, but my real commitment to Christ uh-huh. that I made was in their home at 15 years old. I asked Christ into my heart in their home, and wow. uh, and the rest of that was was several years of really understanding what that meant to mm-hmm. follow Christ and what we're talking about here today. Mm-hmm. You know, being a follower of Christ, a disciple. And uh, to this day, I'm still learning that. Right? Yeah, we're still learning how to follow, uh, how to follow Christ uh, on a daily basis. So, so, so you started going to church. You're learning more about Jesus. His family is just a blessing to you, and it's 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 a good thing that's happening. But let's fast forward all the way to 18, and uh, some things take. You you left home. Uh, well, you you moved yeah. out of out of free out of new work. I and, did. And, but, uh, I did. I, I actually uh, ended up leaving the house at 16, kind of a mutual parting of ways with my, my dad and I. Mm-hmm. Uh, things just kind of came to a point where it wasn't, uh, wasn't going to be uh, a livable situation for, for me to be there. And so I, I left, left uh, the house at 16 and actually dropped out of school. I tried to continue to go to school when I was living in another, another place, another home, and it just wasn't working. So I dropped out of high school at, 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 at 17. I dropped out of high school. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went and got my CHESPA, my diploma, my high school diploma. Somehow, by the grace and mercy of God, I was able to pass that thing. Yeah. And uh, so I had a high school diploma. Uh, but the whole time I was involved with this, uh, with this church uh, in Newark, I, I had started getting, I, I had been a musician before and played guitar and got involved with their worship team a little bit and, and still, you know, still struggling with some of those, uh, some of those things that were um, a part of my life before Christ. Mm-hmm. And, really uh, hadn't completely dealt with, even at 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, uh, drinking and drugs were still part of my life. Yeah. And so they, those things started to kind of, uh, kind, of, kind of fall to the side as, as more of Christ was in me, uh-huh. less of the world, you know, less of those things that were, that were holding me back started to f- kind of fall away. Yeah, definitely. And, and just through good relationships and people speaking into my life. And, uh, but during that whole time, I, I kind of got connected with some other musicians that were Christians, and, and we formed a band, uh, and we decided that we weren't going to be a, a band that was going to be in the Bay Area. We moved to L.A., because that's wow. the place yeah, yeah, to yeah. go, right? That is, that is. And we had and to this wait. Is, this is the 80s. This is the 80s. This is, the 80s. This is 83, this is... 84. Yeah, so yeah, eight, uh, actually 82, 83. And so we had to wait for the drummer to graduate high school before we could move. <laughs> that's, yeah, and the other two guys in the band were older. Uh, older guys, and again, musically, I was out of my league. Uh-huh. These They're... guys were phenomenal musicians, and just it was through our friendship and the relationship that we kind of formed that band, and we moved to L.A. because we were going to make it. And and people would ask, you know, are you a are you a Christian band? And we didn't want to be labeled uh-huh. a, a Christian band that we would just say we're a band of Christians. Yeah. And uh, but we're there, and we're trying to trying to get things off the ground with the band, and we practiced for six whole months before we played our first, oh gosh, yes. first gig at the LA Fairgrounds, actually, yes. and, I, and so, uh, you know, those years of, of, uh, of leading up to that, of my relationship with God, kind of, kind of hit a, 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 not a wall, but just a point of me needing to make a decision, that, that, that being, that time of being in LA and pursuing what I thought I wanted to do with mm-hmm. my life, uh, seemed to be, uh, contrary to what God had for my life. Yeah. And not that it was not like it, the acceptable will of God, mm-hmm. but it w- definitely wasn't God's perfect will for my life. So did you feel that like stirring up 
in you. I did. Like you were thinking a lot about it. I did. And, and God was talking to you, not in an audible voice, but you started contemplating and thinking about these things and, and God. Yeah. And you know, I, and I, I'm sure you can relate to this, Chris, at yeah. times in our life that, that things become uncomfortable yeah, yeah. when you're not in God's will yeah. or his perfect will. And that's kind of what began to happen is Absolutely. that things became uncomfortable. And it just got to a point where I knew that this is not where I, I needed to be or stay. I reconciled with my family, reconciled with my dad wow, and actually cool. moved back. Uh, moved back home from LA back to, to Northern California when I was 20 and moved back in uh, to my home. Mm -hmm. and, th and at that point, I knew what I was coming. I was leaving LA, leaving the band to come back to, to my home to go to a school that was at the wow. church that we both went to and yeah. we both accepted Christ at. Yep. And it was a, a two-year discipleship school. Gosh, you told me earlier um, some of the things that you left behind. And so... You were out there, you brought all kinds of music equipment and everything. I think that's huge about like leaving things behind. Um, if you could tell yeah. everybody about what you did with that. Well, we, you know, um, the band, we, we kind of all invested. We all pitched in for equipment and, you know, personal guitar equipment that I had. And then the band equipment, we all kind of pitched in. And so when I, when I left the band, we had to kind of have a, a equitable uh, parting of ways financially. So I took some of the equipment and... And that was kind of my buyout, I guess, you uh -huh. know, for, for kind of leaving the band. But I really felt like I was leaving that behind, mm -hmm. that I was pursuing what, you know, like what Philippians says to, I'm not looking back, I'm leaving what, what's behind to pursue the goal that God has for me. Yeah, that's good. And, uh, and that's what I felt I was doing. And so I really gave away uh, most of what I had. I kept, you know, some guitars and a few different things, you know, uh, pieces of equipment, but I gave a lot away. I gave some to a missionary and to some young, younger people younger musicians in the church, I just gave a lot of stuff away. Gosh. And thought I was going to leave it and thought I wasn't going to be playing. Yeah. I, I didn't think I would was be. done. Yeah. I didn't think I, I'm done being a musician. So you pull up, you're back, you're back in our hometown, Fremont. And uh, tell us about what you did. You came back to something. Yeah. Again, the, the, the church that, that, uh, that I had gotten saved at and, and left to go to LA had a two-year discipleship school called Genesis. And oh. it's, it's, a, it's an intensive school, and the first-year program is discipleship training. The second-year pro, second program is advanced leadership training, and I knew I needed to have an understanding of what it meant to have a relationship with God, and that's mm -hmm. exactly what the school offered. Wow. It was a, a, a two-year program, but you could do it independently one year, and a lot, of, a lot of students would go for one year just to kind of get their relationship with God established and to get some understanding, and then those that felt maybe more uh, it, it, that they wanted to pursue ministry would go to the second year program. And so I, I went into the, to the uh, president's office, Jim Argue, and just said, hey, Jim, I feel like uh, God's called me and here's my story. And uh, he said, let's pray about it and let's see if God's going to be in this. And it worked out to where we both felt like this is where I needed to be. Wow. And I signed up and that was in, moved back to the uh, Bay Area in like July of 84. Five and, and in, in, yeah, and in uh, September, I was enrolled in that school. Gosh. So th uh, three things. Um, tell us a little bit about, you were there for uh, those two years, but devotional life, mentors, and then were there other things that, um, e experiences that, that took place there? Um, tell us a little bit about that because, you know, if everyone who's watching and listening today like, I think it's a great way for people to kind of go, oh, gosh, I'm missing that. Or uh, I probably need to focus more on that. And, yeah, yeah. And, and not everyone can do that. Not everybody can take a year out yeah. of their life and go to a school like, a, and I don't even know if there are many of those schools around anymore, mm -hmm. a, a discipleship school, much like a YWAM, if anyone's yeah. familiar with YWAM, where it's just, that's what you're there for. Mm -hmm. And um, the two years were so foundational, and you talk to anyone that has gone through Genesis or, Her or Heritage, it's had different names over the years, and it had gone through either one year or two years, uh, they, would, they would look back at that as a total uh, foundation-building experience in their life. So for me, uh, again, high school dropout, I wasn't a reader uh, of, of books or really reading my Bible. I would thumb through my Bible. I would read Psalms maybe here and there, or if I needed something, I would, you know, kind of pull the Bible out, but really having a love for God's word uh, or a commitment to 
reading God's word and yeah. feeding myself through the word of God. Well, it just wasn't there. Uh-huh. And, and this was forcing me because it was required to do daily Bible reading. And much like we see now, you know, read through the Bible in a year. We read through the entire Bible in our first year, plus the New oh, Testament wow. two more times. So it was a, a, a lot of Bible reading and books. I never, read, I never read books. I read one book in high school, and it was The Outsiders. Right? I love that book. Yeah. And it, watch the movie. Yeah. So. Oh, you're not that guy. Usually I say, oh, I saw the movie, and then the other person said, oh, I read the book. Oh, no, the, I, did, I, both. I did both. I did both. You did both, yeah. I read the book, like... then watched the movie. <laughs> but so, yeah, and, and in that program, you know, some of the requirements were the Bible reading, but also doing book reports. Yeah. And just really um, basic uh, relational building uh, with our relationship well, with God, the yeah. tale of three kings, and... Love, acceptance, forgiveness. Yeah, and, remember that one. You know too. the the Father heart of God, and just uh, the pursuit of of God. You know, yeah. A. W. Tozer, yeah, yep, yep. the pursuit of God, and and those types of books that really uh, Lin- Lindsey Buckingham. Yeah. You know, missionary all stories. And, yes. Uh, Peace Child. You know, just stories of missions and stories of of people leaving everything to pursue to pursue Christ wow. in their life. So you had a mixture of everything. You had. Uh, uh, you shared earlier today when we were talking, a gentleman named uh, Leroy. What was Leroy's last name? Leroy Dillon. Leroy Dillon. He was a great mentor in your yes. life. Um, this, you know, you learn learning how to not only read your Bible, but how to consistently feed yourself and, yeah. and all those things. And, and that's huge. And so it's going to lead us to the uh, to next question. If, if there was one thing that you would say, man, I wish I knew this in my early journey with Christ. I wish I knew this so I could have avoided it or I could have you know, increase that in my life? You know, I think, uh, I think what, what happened, what happened to me, and I think what happens to a lot of us is that we, uh, we look back at our past, especially though, you know, the past before Christ, and we don't want to revisit that. Mm -hmm. And I get that, but we don't often realize how God used our, uses our past to, um, to take us into what he has for us. That one, that we can relate to other people that, maybe are, are where we once were, yeah. or some things of our past. For me, leaving that band, again, I thought I was done with music, and it was an Abraham and Isaac experience for me that I felt like I was laying music at the altar of yeah. God, and, and that was my Isaac. And uh, knowing the story you know, where God gives Isaac back, obviously, to Abraham, but he was willing in his heart to, to leave, it at the, leave Isaac at the altar, I, I really came to a point where I had to be willing Gosh. because identity uh-huh. as a musician uh, and musicians will understand this or anything maybe that we're that passionate about, yeah. it begins to define us uh-huh. and we begin to define ourselves by I'm a musician or I'm a athlete or whatever it might be that we do. And so I, I had to embrace we willing to lay that down and have almost God breathe life into it yeah. and then give it back to me. So those experiences and those things from the past, um, I didn't want to revisit them, but they don't have to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. That the, that's my testimony. That's yeah. my story. And so I think I, I worked so hard for the first few years through even that discipleship school of understanding that because I, I really didn't want anything to do with the past. And, yeah. And even some, some of the struggles and issues and, and the unhealth of my upbringing and family times and much of it my own doing, mm-hmm. but just the chaos in our home. I just wanted to forget about it yeah. and, and leave it there. And, and then God, God ended up giving it back to you and you're a worship pastor and all yeah. kinds of different churches led worship for like different uh, conventions, retreats and all that stuff. And, and that was gosh. Leroy's influence in my life. Leroy yeah. Dillon, who was a worshiper. And uh, I wouldn't even say a worship leader. He was just a worshiper. Yeah. And he really taught me how to engage in the presence of God and taught us. He was one of the directors of the school mm-hmm. and one of the three staff members at that school and really, really taught me what it was to um, enjoy the presence of God and spend time in the presence of God and then use the gifts. And he, he was the one that first got me back into picking the guitar back up again and then joining him in leading worship for the school. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a lot of people listening um, today, and if you were to give some advice, you know, someone who's just starting their journey with Christ, or even somebody, I remember a scripture I learned was, a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up each time. 
And uh, so you might be young, you might be, you know, two years into serving God, it might be for a while, but what advice uh, can you give people who they're in their journey, um, they're struggling right now, what, what would be some great, like, input into their life uh, with following Christ? You know, uh, the, the, the calling of the disciples, uh, as we read through Scripture, um, when Jesus calls the disciples, the fishermen, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and says he has a new mission for them, to be fishers of men. And, and that is not just for us as pastors mm -hmm. or church leaders. It's for every follower of Christ. Yeah, so, so, and so it, and it, doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean that uh, there won't be difficulty in following Christ. It doesn't mean that there won't be setbacks. And I, I think I had such a... Um, maybe, I don't know, unhealthy is the word, but such an idealistic uh, view of what, uh, what a Christian should be mm -hmm. and what I thought I should be. And I, I really held, tried to hold myself, a standard is a good thing, but a standard is, it's God's standard. Yeah. It's, it's the word of God. And in that, that you, you just said a, a righteous man falls seven times and, and does what? Gets back it up. Gets back up again. And I think that I would, I would kind of piggyback and echo what, what that verse is saying, that we, we have to realize that, that the moving, and, moving forward in Christ, there, there will be challenges with that. Uh, mm -hmm. In just our daily devotional life, there will be challenges with that. In our daily picking up our cross and what that means to pick up our cross and pursue God. Yeah. It's, it's a daily choice that we make. And that yesterday's choices may not uh, may not benefit us today because we need something fresh mm -hmm. that we made choices for the day yesterday that got us through that day but the bible says that uh that to choose you this day yes, yeah. to choose you this day who you will serve and that is uh that is for for not just a moment in time that we ask christ into our heart i believe that's every day of our life what choices am i making today that indicate who it is that i'm serving or what i'm serving yeah and is it, is, am, I, am I pursuing God with my whole heart? Yeah, that, that's good. Because I, I know it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how old you are. You, you get challenged and you feel like giving up. Um, but it's those things that you just, you go back to, right? Yeah. Um, whether it, it is your devotional life or if it is a calling a mentor up and just saying I'm struggling and all those things. I think those are a huge part of, yeah. of falling. Because it's not easy. It's not easy. No, it's not. And I, I, when I, discipling, uh, you know, men in our church or anyone, young people, um, or even in our families, right? Mm -hmm. The the understanding of having that daily connection with God, it it, it it'll get interrupted, right? Yeah, yeah. It, things will try to crowd in on that, mm -hmm. and and really being able to put that so, that time aside, to where this is my time. This is my time with the Lord. And, uh, and I think a lot of times people get discouraged. I know I do. Yeah. And I have fought that so often over the years of, of pursuing God that I get discouraged because I'll maybe do really well for a period of time in my devotional life or my Bible reading, and then I'll, I'll, I'll fall off, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I realize that, man, it's been two or three days mm -hmm. since I've been in the Word like I should be yeah. in the Word. I may be, you know, dwelling on Scripture or quoting it or something, but I'm not I've, I've missed that quiet time. I've Absolutely. missed that personal time. And I think it's easy to be discouraged by that. And then that pattern, that negative pattern just continues instead of saying, wait, let me, I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to start fresh today Yeah. and, and start a new uh, and, a, and a fresh uh, uh, approach to my devotional life that's, today. That's good advice. That's because if you get burnt out and you just kind of sit down and not do anything about it and just go, okay, God, I know you gave me a fresh start. It, it gets things yeah. going. You don't feel like you have to backtrack or anything. You That's start right. new. Okay. So is there a question I haven't asked you today that would, um, you know, encompass our conversation today about taking, taking up your cross? What question should I have asked you today um, that uh, maybe I didn't hit? Well, I think uh, probably a lot, if we take a little bit of time and think about it, we could turn this into a couple hours of, <laughs> and a whole series of this podcasts. Is a, this is our last question. Too. Okay. I, I, think, um, I think what to do in, 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 as we're following Christ and, and being a disciple um, is, is where does that transition take place where we become a disciple maker? Yeah. And I, I, again, Ooh, I, looking back at that two-year school that, that I went to, really that good. first year of of intensive understanding and the identity of who I am in Christ. They spent two weeks on 
just the topic of God is love. And, and that was two weeks of just teaching us about wow. the love of God. And you move through that first year program. And if you choose to go to a second year, you become now a mentor of a first year student. So as a first year student, I had a a second year student that was a mentor, a discipler, uh -huh. and then a staff member over them. And, uh, and that was, again, in the context of a, of a, of a school and a discipleship school, but it, it should be no different yeah. in, 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 our, in our walk, that we should always have somebody um, that one is speaking into our life, that's calling us up in Christ, but we, wherever we're at in mm -hmm. our, on our journey with the Lord, and, and regardless of how long we've been a Christian, we, sh we have influence in others' lives as well. Yeah. And we should be looking for someone to pour into and somebody that we can be a discipler to. Yeah. And so there's that, that, I think, that constant pursuing. And I think it's easy, um, it's easy to become just focused on my own spiritual journey and my own spiritual growth and my own spiritual um, uh, just growing in Christ that we forget that God wants to do something in us, but then he wants to do something through wow. us yeah. in the lives of others. And that's, I mean, that's the best way to end off today's conversation is that like we commit to being a disciple and we end up discipling somebody else. That's right. And so, hey, thank you. Um, I did bring something uh, today that I wanted to kind of end our, our time together with. And I brought a Connect Four to kind of end. And it's I was a, wondering what you're going to do with that. It's our speed challenge. Okay. So I'm going to put that bad boy right there. And if you just kind of follow around and... Uh... The name of the game is Connect Four. Gotcha. Four cross. Hmm. One more game. Object, connect four of your checkers in a row while preventing your opponent from doing the same. But look out. Your opponent can sneak up on you and win the game. I won. Pretty sneaky, sis. Connect Four, the vertical checkers game from Milton Bradley. Maybe I should do some rapid questions with you. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you're good. I'm on the defensive here. You're like a... Oh my gosh, I just blocked it again. I'm on the... Oh, I could have won right there. Oh, hold on. Uh, I, I, this might be a jinx. I think this is going to be... I don't think no one's gonna win on this. I, I, it, it's nobody won. Nobody won. It's. I was just not going okay, let's play oh, another oh, game. Oh, no. Let's no, play I, another I want game. You go ahead. This is the funnest part of the game. Right there. there you go. There it is, right there. Hey, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Pastor Bill, you for it. taking us uh, learn more about discipleship. Please like. Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, share this with somebody. God bless you and uh, have a great day.